Cheers. It is 8.18, according to my computer. And I have finished all the work that I need to do on my computer for tonight. Got like seven, eight, maybe 10 papers to grade. Should be doable. Um, just a couple things. First, you know, am I alone in this as a professor or an educator to say, use a more general word? I always feel a little melancholy the last one or two sessions in class because every class seems to have an emergent personality of its own that will never be repeated again. Mind you, on the other hand, I am quite gratified that this semester, well, this interterm, I've had no fewer than three students taking in a second class from me. I consider that quite an endorsement of what I try to do. On the other, other hand, if you're keeping track, this now implies that I have three hands. So this hand and this hand, and this third hand, I guess. Um, I'm starting a new class on Monday. A new bunch of students taking my global ethics and religion class. And it's always challenging the first week or two because I have that one week to set down the major themes of the class and I hope that the students engage and relate to it. That's it. On the other, other, other hand, the frustrating thing about students that I notice every semester, what the heck do they study in high school? especially my global ethics and religion class, which is a 100 level class. It seems like all these students are confounded and confused by two major concepts. I'm expecting them to cite a source, support their points by either reason, data, or authority for anything that is not common knowledge. Probably a number of them really quite struggled with this. How could they have gone through high school, high school, not knowing that? And the other thing, in scholarly essays, you usually end the opening paragraph either with a thesis statement or statement of methodology, preferably both. I prefer methodology. I talk to my students about how I want them to not only tell me in the first paragraph what question they're addressing, but also tell me what approach they're going to take. And since it's a critical thinking class, I'm looking for one of three approaches. I give one point for analysis. How does this essay work? Two points for critique. Does this essay work well? And three points for synthesis. Can you connect or combine two or more of the readings we've covered today? Um, and then I ask them, whether you're doing an analysis, a critique, or synthesis, in the first paragraph, Tell me what your methodology is. How are you going to analyze or what aspects are you going to analyze? How are you going to critique or what aspects of this work are you going to critique? How are you setting out to connect, to bring into dialogue, to connection, um, to or more of the assigned works to date? And that, for some of them, they never get it. Is this really that challenging? I've posted about this a number of times, I'm afraid. Um, to the good. Well, 
let's start with the, with the bell. Some people question whether or not um, critical thinking, whether people can learn even at the age of 18 or 19, how to think actively, critically, and independently. And I prefer to be an optimist whenever possible, even though I describe myself as a curmudgeon. A curmudgeon is not a mere complainer. A curmudgeon wants to hold people up to a higher, oh, yes, this is the curmudgeon, and this is one of his cats. Hello, Stripey, you're, you're interrupting, you know. So, distinction between a curmudgeon an American planer, or if I might wax into the Yiddish, a kvetcher, is that a kvetcher or a complainer complains for the sake of complaining. A curmudgeon complains because they hold others up to the same high standard that they hold themselves. Yes, a little stripey. So that's why I work curmudgeon and his cats into this because you know i'm sorry cat curmudgeon it works it's alliterative my point is the majority of my students and i'm seeing this even in the interterm intensive class that i'm finishing teaching tomorrow actually by the end of the uh, term get it they can no oh, stripey move your tail they can actually learn how to think critically analytically independently they can do that within even one month of an interterm or in the course of a semester i'm teaching a semester long course so i've been teaching full-time as a professor for the last three, four years, I think. I think it's closer to three, I'm not sure. Do you know what? Yes, I hate to be downbeat and cynical. There are students who, even by the end of the semester, still do not get it. But the majority of them do. The majority of them do at the end of the semester. Some of them get immediately, some get into the flow somewhere in the course of the middle of the semester, some significantly improve by the end of the semester. In fact, the majority of them do. And that's why I do what I do. Because I truly believe that these skills, which should be the fundamental basis of true education can be taught, can be conveyed to the majority of students. And the fact that my students improve steadily in the course of the semester, I take that as a great affirmation of the quality of the good of the legacy that I am trying to leave behind me. But to wax perhaps a trifle cynical, I always have to wonder, how can these students be going to a quality, if relatively small to middling size university um, after high school? and not already been exposed to these ideas. That confounds me. I mean, I took, I think it took me like the first year or so that I was in college to fully get up to speed, but at least I knew how to cite sources. And after my first semester and a rather traumatic class in uh, Charles's Canterbury Tales, where I was gifted to have a great professor, I'm blanking on his name, but what he did 
was with every paper, he wrote two things. He wrote what was good about the paper, and he wrote what was bad about the paper. And in the course of that one semester, I learned how to write a college paper. But you know, why did I know that already, having gone to a college prep high school, Bennett Academy in Lyle, Illinois? Kudos. Um, but it also astounds me that if our educational system is supposed to be oh so much better than back in the day, yes, Evan, I'm calling you out here. I'm using the phrase back in the day. I do not give a darn whether that makes me sound old or not. I'm about to turn 56, doesn't matter. I am at least middle aged. I have the right to say back in the day. That's what I've earned by this gray beard. That said, here's the thing. If Bloom's taxonomy, if the idea of um, scaffolded education, if all this idea of um, flipping the classroom is so powerful and important and common in our current educational system does actually work, then why do I get freshmen and sophomores who are confounded by the idea, who are astounded by the idea, who feel challenged by the idea that I'm expecting them to cite sources to support their points, who really have no conception of how in your opening paragraph in an academic paper, you should straight state or what even is a methodology. Why are these concepts so challenging if our academic theory has come so far along as is proclaimed? I honestly do not know. But stripey, but to the good. I feel that I am making a difference, that the world is better for me being in it, that I will leave, stripey, I will leave a legacy. I will not have children in my flesh. My one, ch this one child of the fur Oh, could you be cute or stripey? Um, is that not enough? But you know what? Every semester, I always hate grading the first paper <laughs> in the semester because so many of these young people have no understanding of what the very simple, the very straightforward things that I am expecting of them. But here's the thing. By the end of the semester, most of them understand what I'm looking for and provide me with papers that are actually pretty good. And that tells me, oh, goodbye, Stripey, that I am doing what I'm supposed to do. I will not die rich. I will not die famous. I will not die as someone of power. I don't care for riches. I do not care for fame per se. I do not care for power. But I am content. I do believe that I am making a difference. And that in and of itself counts for something.
Well, I'm sorry. I got one more philosophical that I meant to. A little update as to what I'm doing and why I do it and why it matters to me. I've got seven, eight, ten papers yet to grade. Oh, the life of professor. The work never stops. Here's the good thing, though. I get some quality single malt scotch while I'm doing the work. Don't tell. Anyway, I will probably not be on the computer again today or on the um, video. But those are my thoughts and my observations about what I do and why I do it. And in spite of the twice over or more interruptions by one of my cats, Lady Miss Personal Story B, kudos to you. I, I wish you all a very good night. Ciao.